what all of us want to see is the best fighting the best. And guys, this past June at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, we got just that with two of the top welterweights, the, the glamour division of boxing right now. Keith one-time Thurman undefeated against the once-beaten Showtime Sean Porter. And man, how often is it when you get a fight of this magnitude that actually not only lives up to the hype, yeah. But exceeds it out. Yeah, and you know, you made the point the welterweight division with an embarrassment of riches, just a very deep division. And this we hoped would be, and that we see some evidence of it potentially being the beginning of a chain reaction of a bunch of these really good fights. And yes, both these men came in prepared, ready to do their job, and they did that and more. Paula, you know the welterweight division more than anyone at this table. You face Showtime Sean Porter. You've had some communication with Keith Thurman in the past. What did you anticipate going into this mega fight? You know, a lot of times these kind of major fights, they, they don't live up to the hype because some, the, sometimes the two combatants are so skilled and, and they're, you know, they're such good boxers that, you know, it'll be like, sort of become a touch and go kind of affair, you know, and then people end up being disappointed. But with these kind of guys, you know, having been in the ring with Sean Porter, I, I always knew that he had that physical element to him, always have that, that mauling style, wants to take you out. And, uh, uh, Keith Thurman has always been known as one of the big knockout punchers in the division, uh, known as one time, obviously, for a reason. But he has good boxing skills. So I kind of expected this element where they would come at each other at first, uh, kind of like two heat-seeking missiles, you know? And, <laughs> and in reality, you know, the crowd was on their feet several times yeah. during the fight, including to close the fight. So definitely wasn't far from disappointment. Well, DJ Khaled is not the only one known for major keys. <laughs> what were the major keys for Thurman and Porter going into this fight? Thank you for that pop culture <laughs> reference. He, yeah, the keys moving in were intriguing and, and uh, mirrors some of what Pauly said. You know, Keith Thurman, while he is a big, powerful uh, welterweight, has good boxing skills. And the trick for him was to box Sean Porter, stay off the ropes, and land his big power shots as Porter was coming in. And for Porter, conversely, his mission was to put Thurman on the ropes, land a lot of body punches, and make it a very messy fight. And the interesting thing is, in a way, both men succeeded. There were over 12,000 fans at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. They were electric. The action was electric. Let's revisit Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter. There's no doubt whatsoever, man. I'm faster, I'm smarter, I'm stronger. We have all the tools it takes for victory tonight. You know, Keith Thurman told me Sean Porter's gonna be in front of him this entire fight, and he plans to hit him with clean, devastating shots. Sean Porter says his game plan to make Keith Thurman uncomfortable the entire fight and hurt him. It is time for the main event of the evening. Showtime, Sean Porter! He has that tenaciousness once he's in the ring. He makes you very uncomfortable. Yesterday in the fighter meetings, he actually said the phrase, if my opponent is comfortable, I'm uncomfortable. Tonight, making the third defense of his title, here is the undefeated WBA welterweight champion of the world. His mantra in life, KOs for life. One time because all it takes is one punch to turn your lights out. The bell and round one, and immediately Thurman tests him with that left hook to the head. There you go. Oh, I tell you, there's no feel I'm processing this fight, huh, guys? Both shot out of the proverbial cannon. And they're both throwing power punches designed to create a knockdown. A great start to this one. All right, good first round. Keep your hands up. Feign him to get him where you need him to be. Yeah, he wants to get inside any which way he can. Work shot. Work on the inside right there. Porter swarming. Thurman on the ropes. That's what Sean needs to do right here. This is what he specializes in. Making you uncomfortable body to body. Come on, get off them ropes, Keith. Keith, get off the ropes. Thurman coming back with a couple of left hooks to the body. Fireworks at the end of the third round! Wow. It is thunder and lightning in Brooklyn! Keep your distance with him. Don't let him get close without punching. Don't just let him rush in. Oh 
Porter just muscles his way in, trying to make life as difficult as possible for the defending champ. Sean Porter starting to lead with his head and not attacking smartly right now. And he could be hit with a big counter punch if he keeps doing that. Heavy exchange. Oh, and Porter's knee buckled after that left. He's hurt. He's hurt. Left uppercut by Thurman. Sean's going to need to reset. He keeps trying to recover. He's cut too. Blood at the corner of the left eye of Sean Porter. We got a cut, Joe. We got a cut, Hal. Stay focused. What happened right there? Did he hurt you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Keep, okay. Keep your hands up. Wow, guys, they were immediately off to the races. What a fantastic opening five rounds. And you know Keith Thurman, of course, wanting to display his power. But, Paulie, like you mentioned earlier, Sean Porter known for his swarming inside attack. We, we saw evidence of everything in those first five rounds. You do, you do. You know, and, and you see Keith wanting to use his legs and Sean kind of wanted to close the gap. But Keith trying to create space because the creation of space allows him to get more leverage on those big bombs. And he's known for those big bombs. While Sean, at, at the end of the day, wants to close the gap, get in his chest because Sean with the shorter arms can work inside and he can, can do some damage on the inside. So you see both guys doing what they do best in spots and making trying to make the adjustments. Al, I think Porter wanted to trap Thurman along the ropes where he may have had his best chance at, at really taking the fight to one time, but Thurman had those eye-catching punches, more, more accurate and, and more powerful. Yeah, you know, Sean Porter, especially in round two, had was able to execute that perfectly. Had a very big round in that round and put Thurman on the ropes. He landed a lot of body shots. But in the course of that first uh, five rounds, on two different occasions, Thurman actually pushed Sean Porter back, made him stumble with a big left hook. Turned out his plan coming in was to land a counter left hook whenever he could. And he did in those first five rounds. And it was a very, very close affair uh, on the scorecards uh, after that point. Yeah, especially uh, when you look, consider what the three judges chosen by the New York State Athletic Commission saw. We take a look at the scores right now, and it couldn't be any closer. All three of them having it 48-47 in favor of Keith Thurman. Yeah, and even though they arrived at it slightly differently, it shows you that they were paying attention and it shows you how close this fight was. What did you think about the judging through five rounds, Polly? I thought that it was, just, it was about fair. You know, like, like Al said, you know, they arrived at their scorecards in a bit of a different way, and that just goes to show you the competitiveness of the fight. You could, there were a lot of rounds where you may score for one guy or the mm -hmm. other, but at the end of the day, we all agree these were close competitive yeah. rounds. What did you like the most about the first five rounds when it came to Keith Thurman's uh, plan of attack? Well, I like that Keith tried to establish his big bombs, but at the same time, he didn't try to get reckless because he knew getting reckless would play to Sean Porter's style. It would play to Sean Porter's strengths. And at day's end, you know, that's what Sean wants, you know? So, so I like the fact that Keith used his legs in spots and, and yet didn't betray his own power punching style. He let go of those shots when he needed to and when he created the space. Anything surprise you about Sean Porter's strategy in the first five rounds? Yet? No, he tried to do exactly what we thought he would. He, he, he's so good at using his jab as a way to come in. That's what makes him different than some of the other fighters who fight that style. When you can jab your way in and it's a powerful jab, uh, sometimes he uses it as a range finder just for that, but then sometimes it's a powerful punch. But he always used that to pave the way in. And that helped him uh, in a couple of those rounds get inside and work the body. Well, as fun as the first half of the fight was, believe it or not, they saved the best for last. Let's take a look at the rest of Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter. Six rounds scheduled for 12 for Keith Thurman's welterweight title. It is as good as advertised. Porter, the veteran, using the elbow, the forearm, doing whatever he can to irritate Thurman. Get him off his game, get him off his rhythm. Dig on the inside, dig. This has been a very nice round for Sean Porter. Yes, he's making the battle of attrition, Alan. This is with Sean Porter's specialty, the battle of attrition. He loves this kind of fight. Porter, physically manhandling Thurman, turning him into the ropes. Don't just jab. He's strong. He's walking through jabs. So you got to add that right hand. Thurman's jab has gone MIA as Porter continues to put on the pressure, trying to cut off the ring. Lead right hand there, though, connected by Thurman. Nice uppercuts on the inside. Sean Porter has shown diversity in his attack. Left uppercut on the inside. Counter left hook to the head by Thurman. Be smart. You win in this round. Be smart. Be smart. Nice job to the oh, body. Good, body shot. good work to the body that hurt Thurman just like Colazzo did. 
In his last fight, susceptible to those body shots, Keith Thurman. Both Thurman and Porter doing their best to deliver. Neither man has gone down. Porter's knees have buckled. Oh, and Porter oh walks right into that left hand. Thurman has him cornered. And Porter able to turn the tables again. An off-balance shot, bringing the fans oh, to their feet. Another and boy, point. they are throwing leather. Punches and punches. What a fight. Come on, Warriors. Way to work. He shook him up again that round. It's mind over matter. You don't mind, it don't matter. We have reached the championship rounds. Both athletes championship caliber. Couple of left hooks to the head by Thurman, and yet Porter continues to navigate the minefield. Sean Porter is a tough cookie. One more round, one more round, and you're the champion of the world. I want you to be smart, though, right? Still champion of the world. You got this fight. Win this round, though. Win yeah. this round. Come on, yeah. baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. All yours. The crowd in Barclays on their feet. Keith Thurman and Sean Porter throw their hats in the ring for fight of the year. Oh, and that right uppercut. And yet Porter keeps coming forward like an extra from The Walking Dead. Bait him. Get him where you need him to be. Turn, baby. Turn. Lead right hand by Porter. Oh, and that uppercut again on the inside by Thurman. One minute remaining. That's where Thurman doesn't want to be right now. Hey, come on, ref. Go. Come on. This is the 12th round, and yet these two warriors are going at it like it's the first. Yeah, baby. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. We have a close but unanimous decision. All three in favor of the winner. And still, WBA welterweight champion of the world, Keith One Time Thurman. How can anyone be a loser after a fight like that? Keith Thurman holds on to his undefeated record and his title with a close unanimous decision. You talk about breathtaking action, a showcase of skills and wills, guys. A blood and guts, not necessarily a brawl because that was high level boxing, but it featured everything that makes us love the sweet science. What did you think of the second half of the fight? Well, your explanation of it is really apt. And part of what made that interesting is both men faced a lot of adversity in the last six rounds of this fight. For Keith Thurman, cut for the first time in his career, hurt to the body again as he was in his previous fight. And for Sean Porter, he was buzzed on several occasions. So we saw both men fighting through not only fatigue, but also some adversity. Left hooks were a plenty, Polly, and, and for Porter, wanting to out-hustle and out-muscle Thurman. But in the end, the judges saw it in favor of Thurman. Did you agree? I agree, but it was a very close fight. And honestly, there's a lot of arguments for even Porter getting the decision. You can't say, oh, it's a travesty right. that Thurman got it, and you wouldn't say it's a travesty if Porter got it. I think going on how the things shaped up in the second half of the fight, they did have to overcome a lot of adversity. And one of the main reasons is because the pace of the fight was so fast. The second half of the fight, you will automatically be fatigued. So now you're more susceptible to being hurt to the head, to the body. Fatigue can cause that. Your, you know, your energy is depleted, so you're not taking shots as well. So, and we noticed Thurman hurt bad to, with a body shot. We noticed Porter get buzzed with the, with the left hook from Thurman as well. Left hooks are plenty, as you mm -hmm. said, and uh, they were landing to the head and body. As a prize fighter and as an analyst, you look at that fight as a, as a fan. We see what we see. What did you see in this fight that maybe wasn't obvious to the naked eye about these two world-class athletes? Well, that there was actual game planning and tactics going on. There was actual uh, uh, adjustments made on both sides. You know, like, to the naked eye, it looks like a terrific fight, a, a barn burner, a, a physical brawl, so to speak. And sure, it is. Once you start to dissect it, you see the little adjustments. I, I noticed Porter, he would get Thurman on the ropes. Then he'd start to pivot to the left or right, just so he can create some space. because. 
as you're pushing Thurman to the ropes, you're working him, yeah, you're out hustling him, and maybe you want to do more damage. You want to create a little bit, little bit of space, and all of a sudden, Sean would swift, switch to the left or to the right real fast, and now all of a sudden, that will create space for more punches and more combinations. You know, I noticed Keith's starting to step back and throw the uppercut, because Sean, a lot of times, when he attacks, will lunge in with his face if he doesn't find anything. So there were technical and tactical adjustments made. Well, let's take a look at the official scoring now through the second half of the fight, round six to 12. And at the end of the fight, it was across the board, 115, 113, all three judges seeing it in favor of Keith Thurman. What do you think was the difference in favor of Thurman? I think the difference was that it, in, during the course of this fight, the more showy and or obvious punches and maybe the more powerful were landed by uh, Keith Thurman, but a great investment to the body by Sean Porter and a lot of great punches landed by him as well. And whenever you get a fight that's 115-113, you could easily see it being a draw or 115-113 for the other guy. And both of these men, and Paulie referenced uh, how there was a lot of nuances in this fight. In addition to the adjustments he talked about, we also saw that the game plan that these two fighters came in with, both with excellent trainers, uh, I might add, also helped them because we saw that uh, uh, the Keith Thurman knew from the get-go that he could land a counter left hook against uh, Porter. And it was evidence right from the beginning. And some of the things that Pauly talked about in terms of the way uh, Porter maneuvered him on the ropes were clearly things they had planned to do as well. When you look at the judging criteria, and Paul, you always hear, well, it depends on what the judges favor. Again, it's subjective, but the, without oversimplifying it, the, the power, the accuracy of Thurman, the aggression of Porter, is that what it came down to? Yeah, it did. You know, a lot of times it's hard to appreciate a drag out kind of a fighter unless he makes the entire fight a drag out kind of a fight. So you start to kind of score, how is this fight playing out? Who's, who's executing their style better. You know, Thurman doesn't want to drag out kind of a fight. He doesn't mind it, but he doesn't want that. Porter wants the dra wants all three minutes of every round to be a drag out kind of a fight, like a mud fight, you know, like really in the trenches. So I, I think Thurman being able to distance himself in the key spots and landing the eye-catching shots as we were talking about, I think that kind of started to pull some of these close rounds in his favor.